In a recent survey given to potential candidates for the presidency in 24, one Governor Ron DeSantis, yes, the macho man himself, was asked about Ukraine. He said, well, we've got other things on our plate, you know, like the economy, soaring food prices, you know, America. How dare you? What? What the fuck? Ukraine's number one, dude. I don't give a fuck. I'm Jazz Bergonzo, and this <laughs> is What's Next. Hey, what's up, everyone? Happy Friday, y'all. Jasper Gonzo, what's next? Your daily dose of facts, common sense, and salt. Hope you guys are enjoying the TGIF. Wow. In a recent survey to potential presidential candidates in 24, a number of those, you know, like Nikki Haley and Mike Pompeo and, you know, Mike Pence and you know, who cares? But the only one that actually is worth any of its salt is one Donald Trump and one Governor Ron DeSantis. Well, speaking of Governor Ron DeSantis, yes, the macho man himself who has been slamming the woke for the better part of the last four years was asked about Ukraine. Yeah, not a priority, according to him. And of course, there are those who are butthurt because of it. This comes out of Breitbart. Never Trumpers, neocons, Democrats melt down over DeSantis' stance on Ukraine. Yeah, he's not a fan. A collective meltdown has ensued among four policy establishment after Florida's governor, Ron DeSantis, espoused views on Ukraine conflict that echoed former President Donald Trump. Their views were slated, uh, stated in response to a questionnaire sent by Fox News host Tucker Carlson, yes, you can't cuck the tuck, that included six questions on Ukraine. Trump's views were not a surprise, since he called for a diplomatic execution in the past. In response to whether Ukraine was a vital interest, he responded, no, but it is for Europe and say Europe should be paying more than the U.S. or its equal. He also reiterated that his desire for negotiations that he would lead himself and said aid to Ukraine would depend on those negotiations while adding Europe needs to do more. However, it was the Sanders response that sent the foreign policy establishment reeling, yes, but hurt, and of course, rectums clinching. As to whether Ukraine was a vital national interest, the Sanders said, quote, while the U.S. has many vital national interests, securing a border, addressing a crisis readiness within our military, achieving energy security, independence, checking the economic, culture, and military power of the Chinese, the chai -coms, becoming further entangled in a territorial dispute between a proxy war between Ukraine and Russia. Yeah, not one of them. The Post summarized the collective panic among the Republican establishment figures in Washington. Quote, to many in the Republican Party, Florida governor has emerged as more serious and electable 24 replacement than Trump. But DeSantis', but DeSantis dismissal of Russia's invasion of Ukraine is a mere territorial dispute, sure of any vital U.S. interest that has set off a panic in the GOP, as well as the conservative Russia hawks circle the once that once included DeSantis. Former Republican congressman and never Trumper Adam Kinzinger, yes, soy boy and mangina himself, who cried in Congress, expressed Surprised at his former fellow congressman's, congressman's response, he and DeSantis once sat together on the House Armed Services Committee. Quote, well, DeSantis just threw in with the crazies. Talk about a misread, he tweeted. Well, this is the same Adam Kinzinger who said January 6th was worse than 9-11. So there you go. Former Republican congresswoman Liz Cheney, yes, who got crushed in her re-election bid by um, I don't know, 30 points <laughs> and pretty much retired her dumb ass. A Trump ally, um, I'm sorry, never a Trumper and strident neo conservative said DeSantis is wrong and seems to have forgotten the lessons of Ronald Reagan. Lindsey Graham, yes, bend over Lindsey, a Trump ally, but also a top neocon in the Senate, issued veiled criticism of Trump and DeSantis' response. Quote, to those who believe that Russia's unprovoked barbaric invasion in Ukraine is not a priority for the U.S., you're missing a lot. Several other hawkish Republican senators also pushed back against the census remarks. Another Fox News host, yes, Geraldo Rivera, yes, of course, he famous of throwing chairs, said that he was disappointed in the census response that Ukraine was not a vital U U.S. interest. Disappointing. Announcing Ukraine's not a vital interest, not in U.S. interest to prevent expansionist Russia from invading innocent neighboring countries. Not in our interest to prevent return of the Iron Curtain. In our interest to roll over Putin. Chris Murphy, Democrat, 
Wednesdays on MSNBC's Joe, No One Watches uh, Morning Joe, that former President Donald Trump's wing of the Republican Party has decided to turn its back on democracy. Yes, democracy. I worry that DeSantis and the Trump and Trump support for Putin opposition to Ukraine is part and parcel of a broader lack of enthusiasm for democracy and self-governance, he said, arguing that the U.S. did not defend Ukraine. Yes, the Captain Sweatpants, an entire post-World War II order falls apart. Yet some neoconservatives held that hope that the Senate was just trying to take votes away from Trump and that if he were president, his actual policies will be different. Peter Doran, center, uh, a senior adjunct fellow at the Hawkish Foundation for Defense and Democracies, people are asking what to make of DeSantis' answer. I suggest to take it by a presidential candidate's foreign policy vision then actual policies enacted by his administration are often no more than distant cousins. Presidential candidates are usually trying to come up with something that sounds good and tough during a debate or television interview, but once in office, getting that presidential daily briefing, every foreign policy challenge suddenly looks like a lot more complicated. What DeSantis says may not tell us all much of what he would do as president. He's not the macho man, the savage, or nothing. The fact of the matter is, is that he's absolutely 1000% correct. The proxy war between Ukraine and Russia is just that, a proxy war. And he wants no part of it. Most of Americans don't want any part of it. But yet, you had a lot of Americans who had their little Ukraine flags on their Twitter accounts and, you know, on their Instagram accounts, and they were all feeling good and patting themselves on the back and breaking shoulders of, I stand with Ukraine. Well, I was one of them in the very beginning. Who stood at Ukraine and said, hey, you know what? You can't have Russia just come in and just, you know, knock anybody around and bowl over people and, you know, smack the shit out of people, you know. But then as the months started to go on, you saw its true face. You saw Vladimir Zelensky. Yes. Captain Sweatpants himself says, I need more monies. Here comes dementia writing checks to the tune of 130 billion and counting given to Ukraine. And yet, what has changed? Has democracy been established in Ukraine? No, no, because Ukraine was never a democracy to begin with. It was a socialist country led by an authoritarian dictator. And the fact of the matter is DeSantis knows this. A lot of people know this, including Donald Trump. But yet DeSantis is the only one with balls enough to call it out. I'm Jazz Berganzo. This is What's Next. When we see more just like this, please leave a comment below. Like it, share it, subscribe to it. And we'll catch you guys next time. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Peace.